Greetings, everyone. I would like to share my story with you. I apologize in advance that it will take a little longer, but <laughs> at least you will get to know me better. First of all, I will say something about myself and then about what God has done for me through this gospel. I remember one moment in church, I was about 10 years old, when I thought God was present there. I was overwhelmed by the feeling of peace and love of being in his presence. All I knew about God was that he was omnipotent and that he loves me so much, so I always had much more freedom with him than with people. I also had a good relationship with my parents. I always knew that they loved me and I could rely on their word. My father is a man in whose presence I have always felt special. He never raised his voice to me. He never condemned me. He had a lot of understanding, love and respect for me. I remember one case while I was telling him something that was untrue. I knew that he also knew that it was untrue, but he didn't tell me anything because he didn't want me to feel uncomfortable. That caused in me even more love and respect for him. He taught me that the most important thing was to keep my word. And when I promised him something, he knew that nothing could make me break my promise. So it was with him. My mother is a very devoted woman. She always thinks of others. If you are sick or poor, she will always be the first to be around you. These are people who have never read the Bible, but sometimes in prayer, I tell God that for some things, I would like to be at least half of what the two of them are. I'm truly blessed for a childhood which I spent with them. It is interesting that throughout my life, I was often insecure, as if I depend on someone or something. But it seems that the principle for when I'm weak, then I'm strong has ruled in my life because every time things ended much better than I expected. Today, I'm aware that success doesn't depend so much on how many abilities you have or will ever have in life, but on what God can do for you. Because I know that all I have are exclusively God's intervention in my life without my merits. What I have always wanted most of all in my life was for people to have trust in me. I would be especially fulfilled if someone showed me that I'm trustworthy and that would be the biggest and maybe the only proof that I'm worth it. In my heart and in front of God, I knew I was a faithful friend and it gave me peace. In this way, loyal friendship and one day a faithful and sincere marriage were the ideal of life for me. Everything else was less important. However, I have seen from the examples of others that married couples are dissatisfied and that friendships are often based on selfish interests. I have seen friendships break up easily and then people reveal things from a former friend's personal life. For me, that was an indicator that I can trust people, but I really wanted to have someone who loves me and in whom I can have unconditional trust. During my studies at the age of 19, I finally accepted the fact that there is no loyal person which I was looking for. It broke a big part of me. I believe that people never changed when it came to loyalty, so if someone were dishonest with me, even for a small thing, I would often pretend not to be aware of that insincerity, but I could never trust that person again. I believe that if someone deceives you once, he would do it again. I must emphasize that all my best friends I had, including the one who sat next to me on the first day of school, are still in my life. So I always had good friends around me with whom I could be pretty much who I am. But now I realize that I was looking for something that can be found in people. On the other hand, I have seen that true values in life are not valued. Also, it seems to me that everyone in life has some gift that they have developed and enjoying it except me. I felt empty and useless. I didn't know what to do with my life, where I'm going or where I was going to end up. 
Suicidal thoughts began to occur to me and I played with them for several months. Only when I thought about it, I felt joy inside of me. The third time I stood on the place where I could do it, suddenly a thought came to me. What would your mother do after that? And I gave up thinking of actually doing it, but I still wanted it to happen to me. Of course, I covered it all up with a fake smile on my face. A few months after playing with suicidal thoughts while I was working in the store, in August 2011, a guy showed up in the store. I felt he wanted something. At one point, I thought he was planning on stealing my money. He bought something and left. After a few days, he came again. I prepared the phone to call my brother if it will be necessary, but he bought something and left. It was so weird. When I returned to another city to study at the university, he got in touch with me and I realized that he came to the store to see me because as he himself later said, he was planning to marry me. His mother had previously two dreams in which she was told that I was the mom woman for her son and she took it quite seriously. She had never seen me before, but she knew who my parents were and she liked them. His parents found where I was working and that's how he came to see me. There was no thought of marriage in my head, but he was persistent but unobtrusive so that we could at least meet. When I turned him down, he later told me that it was the first time in his life that he couldn't sleep all night. I wondered why this guy wanted me so badly. He was at the peak of his career a successful journalist sitting with presidents, with ministries and the most influential people in the country. And I was at the bottom of my life, completely uninterested in life. The company of influential people didn't attract me at all because I never felt good next to those who have a high opinion of themselves. But he wrote to me with so much respect. He was so normal and simple that I couldn't find fault in him. After three, four months of, te of texting each other, knowing that he had serious intention, continuous rejection to meet him seemed disrespectful to me. I decided to meet him and tell him after the meeting that I didn't see myself next to him so that he would not ask me to see him again. He we sat down at the table and then I saw that three hours had passed like three minutes. I felt like I had known him my whole life. I thought, how can I tell this man now that I don't see myself next to him when I actually see myself next to him? If you had known me then, and if you had known how long it would take me to trust someone again, you would have realized how strange it is that after the third meeting, I agree to marry him one day under the condition that my parents will be satisfied with my decision. After a few weeks, Zdravko and I were engaged. And here I saw God's intervention in my life, although I didn't ask for it. When we spent time together, I let him talk to get to know him better. Everything that was in the depth of my heart came out of his mouth. His desires were my desires. He told me about trust in a marriage which is 100% in which the spouses will be true friends. He told me that if Christ will be our common interest, then all love will grow from year to year because Christ will give us that love. And this gave me hope because the reliance was on God and not on man. He told me he wanted to dedicate himself to his wife. He talked about faithful love that will be so strong that we will have to hide from others. It sounded too good to be true. Sometimes I thought, he's a journalist. He's probably telling untruth. This is just a nice story to marry me. So I told him negative things about myself so that he might give up on me. And he said that he likes loose things and that he wanted me just the way I am. I finally felt I didn't have to try to be perfect in order to be loved and accepted. Zarko told me about God and it touched my heart in a special way. When he told me that we need to get to know God and that God wants to change us, I told him 
how to get to know God who is in heaven and why God would change me. I'm a good person. I don't do anything bad to anyone. In fact, I do opposite. I only do good. Then I realized that the Bible is not just an important church book, but a scripture from God for us and for me personally, through which I can get to know God and find out what his will is for my life. I was really eager to apply what is written in the Bible in my life because it was very logical for me that the one who created me knows best what is good for me. That was the time when I experienced conversion. The first thing I realized when I started reading the Bible was how selfish I really am and that the good things I did for others I didn't do because I was good but because I felt good about it. Every time I took to read the Bible, I would have unusual headaches and the feelings of fear as if someone who is invisible is in my presence. Then I realized in which turning point of my life I was. And for the first time in my life, I told God that I'm surrendering my life to him in order to lead me because I don't know what is good for me. People who love me were telling me to be careful because they heard that Zravko was in a sect but no one knew which sect. There were other pressures from various sides to give up. In the depth of my heart, I felt that all this was something special for me. However, I was aware that I knew Zraku for a very short period of time and was completely open for God to work in my life. And I told him to separate me from Zraku if he wasn't for me. I prayed for it every day and believed that God would do it if it was his will. I quickly realized how frivolous the story is that Zrako is in some sect and how much I needed God and him in my life. I have always respected people of other faiths, but I loved Catholicism because I was born in that religion and I believe that it was the most correct religion. However, even as a child, I wondered what if I was born into a Muslim or Orthodox family. Even then, I would believe that my religion is the most correct. When I learned from Zdravko that the Ten Commandments I had learned from the Catholic Catechism were not the same as in the Bible, that they had been changed, I was shocked that someone had taken it upon themselves to change God's word. I read Second Commandment of God from the Bible, and I wondered what all those statues and pictures in the church are doing and why do we worship them if God says we shouldn't do it. The explanation that the church has the right to change what God said didn't satisfy me. I felt a little deceived and I lost confidence in that system. Here, people are very attached to tradition. Tradition is more important to them than the word of God. Both Zravko and I came from a hard Catholic background, and I, I knew that if I accepted the Bible as an authority, I would be labeled as a member of a sect, even of those who are closest to me. However, the desire in me to go for something that sets me free and what my heart and mind say is right was stronger than anything. When Zdravko and I got married, he dedicated his life completely to God and I was his support in that. We never joined any church or organization, nor it was in our plan. Zdravko especially told me that we should be one, as the Bible teaches, but that I should have my own individuality. I had time to read, study and do what I love. Along with the Bible, I enjoyed reading Christian books about raising and educating children and about health as well. I made receipts for raw, healthy food, which I put together in one book. We did natural medicine together. Along the way, I finished my studies where my first great experiences with God began to line up. God has given us two daughters, Anna and Matea, who are the greatest blessings in our lives. We traveled a lot. We spent 99% of the time together. We really lived a beautiful life, and I was very grateful to God for everything he gave me. Today, after almost 10 years of our marriage, I know why God kept Zdravko for me and me for him. Apart from opening my eyes to many things in life and bringing me to God, no one has ever respected me as he respects me.
No one has ever appreciated me as much as he appreciates me. And no one has valued my opinion as much as he has. He is to me more and better than what I have ever looked for in my life. Although I had life that somebody could only wish for, I had one strong inherited natural inclination that was damaging my quality of life. And because of that inclination, I couldn't fully enjoy the blessings God had given me. And this is the main reason why I decided to give my testimony and to testify from personal experience about the power of God that transforms man. I know that human nature likes to misuse information from other people's personal lives, but I will still say what it is about because I want God to be glorified. It's about my jealousy to my husband. It was definitely something I didn't want and I didn't choose to be. I know that almost every woman has a dose of jealousy, but in my case, it was very strong. Without thinking, I would agree to give everything I have just to be free of what I feel. Jealousy was not strong only because of my natural inclination, but it was further intensified by the action of the forces of darkness in our lives. In what way by the action of the forces of darkness? Before our marriage, Zdravko was connected with people who were deeply in the occult, who practiced sorcery and whose specialty was to interfere in people's lives and to incite splits among married couples. Zdravko was very close to these people and he knew well what kind of powers the demons gave them and how they could apply them to the other people and married couples. At one point, we realized that these people use sorcery against us in order to harm us because Zdravko left them. Through everyday life, we were able to see how the forces of darkness can create events in your life, set up circumstances and especially to affect your weaknesses and to even more strengthen them. It became so obvious over time that it started to be laughable. Sometimes I told him in advance who would call him and when, as well as what would happen in certain situations, and it was exactly as I told him. Those were things that incited my jealousy in a strong way. It was a difficult period for me, much harder than you can imagine. I did everything I believed would help me to stop being jealous, but I realized that I couldn't help myself. I surrendered myself to God every day. I prayed for people who hurt me with the desire to love them, but I couldn't. I told God that I agreed to everything he says. I was giving up on things I loved most, and that is to keep things under my control just to change me. God had indeed answered all my prayers until then, but this seemed to be one part of my life that he couldn't interfere with, but I couldn't understand why. I tried to divert my thoughts, to read books, to occupy my brain with other things, but jealous thoughts and feelings kept coming back. I didn't know what else to do, so hoping that someone had already got rid of it and shared the solution with others, I visited various forums, YouTube channels, websites, but I realized that there is no solution there. It made me even worse. Then I realized how strong is the slavery of the old man the Bible speaks of. In the summer of 2017, we went to Hungary to personally meet our brother David Clayton, from whom we first heard this gospel. In the same year, Zravko began to preach. People close to us left us and said that David was a dangerous heretic. I was a little skeptical. I wanted in our life to be shown if this gospel is true. I remember when Zdravko explained to me that God loves me unconditionally, which awakened in me a great liberation and greater love for God. But sometimes I had thoughts that it was too beautiful and that I should be careful. Every day I told God not to let us deviate from the right path and to lead our lives. 
then the people who left us started talking against Draco, which gave me the right to suspect that what they are saying about David is also a subtle lie. The more people spoke against Draco, David and this gospel, the more my desire for biblical baptism grew. In the spring of 2018, Zdravko baptized me in the name of Jesus Christ. However, even after two years of Zdravko's preaching of the gospel, I was still skeptical about whether Christ should live in us. And I was a little ashamed of God because of that. I told him if that is true, he needs to convince me personally. One day it really clicked in me. I remember exactly where I was in the house when I realized that Christ is the seed of eternal life that should be in us and that if we have Christ in us, we have eternal life. But I was still not released. A few days before the meeting in Serbia in August 2019, when David and Howard were our guests, my pain regarding jealousy culminated. Then, for the first time in my life, I became angry with God and told him that I couldn't believe that I had been asking him for seven years to remove this problem from me and that he had not yet answered me. I told him that I would never ask him about it again and to do with it whatever he wanted. I really gave up on that and I decided that it would never be an obstacle to my joy again. I told God that I know that he loves me, but also that I want from him to prove it to me at this camp meeting in a special way. I told him that I would like from him to send me a person much older than me, with whom I can talk about life and receive blessings through that person. Circumstances were set for me completely unexpectedly to talk with brother David. The conversation was short, but long enough for me to assess that David is a person I can trust. I believed in my assessment because it rarely happened to, to be wrong. After talking to him, I felt so blessed. And then I realized that it was the answer to my prayer. When it was time for laying hands, for which I was also a great skeptic before, under the impression that brother David left on me, I suddenly received a strong incentive that this is what I miss in my life. I told Zravko that I want that and that I only want brother David to pray for me. That night, I said to Jesus, now I allow you to come and live in me. While David was praying for me, I believed and I knew that this was happening that Jesus was coming to live in me. And I was very, very happy about that. Remember that I prayed to God to prove to me that he loves me. These were David's words when he laid his hands on me. Sister Nina, Sister Nina, dear child of God, Drago Dete Bože, God loves you. Bog te voli. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be forever changed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Since that night, I have truly been changed forever. That night, I was born again. And from that night, I was freed from the bondage of jealousy. What a freedom, brothers and sisters. I felt like a bird released from a cage. It was like someone had put me in a new world where no one and nothing would diminish my joy. Then I realized that while I was waiting for Christ to change me, he was waiting for me to call on him and let him come and live in me to change me forever, to give me a new life free from old slavery. My religiousness, prayers, Bible reading, many experiences, moral life, good intention, and strong desire to live according to God's will couldn't change my old nature and old inclination. I needed a new nature, Christ's nature. I needed a new birth. I have never felt so loved and accepted before, neither by God 
nor by people, but also by myself. I remember the moment when, after the meeting in Serbia, I looked in the mirror. For the first time, I was satisfied with my appearance. It was like seeing a new self. I was full of love and understanding for other people, accepting them just the way they are, without wanting to change them or condemn them. When I remember some people who had hurt me before, I felt like I actually had nothing to forgive them, that they had done nothing to me. My tendency toward pessimism disappears. Now I could be encouraging to others. My marriage got a new quality. Finally, I was able to fully experience how much Zdravko loves me and my love for him has become much greater. I was so free to live and love. Zdravko told me that he got a new wife. Also, my prayers have become a real enjoyment. I felt so special in God's presence. This gospel has truly proved true in my life. It changed man in supernatural way. We can change our nature and inclination. It's a gift from God when his son comes to live in us. After that camp meeting in Serbia, I started watching and writing David's sermons day and night. I enjoyed watching these sermons because through them I became even more aware of God's goodness and love for me. Also, I realized that there is something else that God wants besides changing me and glorifying himself through me. And that is that he wants me personally, my friendship, my time spent with him, my love, without asking for anything in return. I am aware that I can always go back to the old way of thinking if I don't abide in Christ. But I'm also aware that my old nature no longer rules over me. Now Christ rules over it. And to be honest, I like to depend on Christ because I know what I was without him. I live for the moment when I will be in his arms, alone, me and him. I don't know when it will be, but what I do know is that I will be the one to be with him at every step. Wherever he goes, there I will be, and it will be like that forever. What I will say now is not the upliftment of man in any way. We are all nothing without God, but I am grateful to God that through my husband Zdravko, and then through birth David, he changed my life completely. Also, I'm glad that I got to know Brother David better through three of his diaries, which he gave me when we were in Jamaica. Through reading his relationship with God over a period of 14 years, it was very affirmative to me that I was right when I assessed at a camp meeting in Serbia that I could trust him. God knows what it means for me to show me that I am worthy of such trust that David gave me as a gift his personal diaries, and that is against just another great proof of God's love for me. But it is also proof to how much freedom Brother David has in Christ. Also, I would like to thank David's wife, Jen, who is always there in the background and who has been the greatest support and best friend to her husband all these years. Without her, he couldn't be a blessing to us today as he is. I'm thankful to God for all of you, brothers and sisters. I feel honored to be in the company of people who love God. But I'm most grateful for the new life in Christ, for this freedom and for my heavenly father, who is what I have always looked for in people, a loyal friend who will never let me down. May God bless you. Amen.